never heard of this terminology before. Like if, when I was first diagnosed, I had never heard of a naturopathic doctor. I did not know that these things even existed. Um, so when I was diagnosed, it was 2015. So I, um, it's been six years. It's been almost six years now, which is super exciting. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And I, you know, had, I was 26 at the time, just before my 27th birthday. And I was just like living like a super toxic lifestyle. I, you know, had it all like going for me on paper. You know, I had this great job in the corporate world. I had bought this house at a young age. I had a nice car. I was just like, you know, ticking off all these boxes of like, just putting myself in this mold of what I thought like a, a, a healthy, happy, you know, person would, would look like. And, but I was really miserable on the inside, if I'm being honest. And then um, I got breast cancer and the treatment plan involved chemotherapy and radiation and um, hormone therapy thereafter. And it was really through that process, um, you know, of chemotherapy, as you know, many you and your listeners know it, you know, it's a, it's a whole unraveling. Like when you lose your hair, you're, you're, you just see yourself as, as, as your essence. And, you know, I didn't like what I saw, you know, I had to really do some healing there to really come home to myself and learn to love and accept myself exactly as I am all of me. And that's kind of what led me to this new path that I'm on. Cause I'm no longer in corporate finance working for the man. Um, I live for me. I, I, I listen to the light of my heart, the light of my soul. And I make decisions that are aligned with me um, and my calling in life. And, but I listened to this podcast and they had a naturopathic doctor on it who specialized in natural cancer care. And that was the first time that I had ever heard that a naturopathic doctor existed. And I immediately like made an appointment because it actually happened to be local to the city that I was living in which was a blessing and just listening to her talk on this podcast about how you can work with conventional treatment so you can support your body holistically with you know during chemotherapy during radiation and after conventional treatment to really build your body back up so this like I don't know what it was because at this point in my life I thought anybody my sister was really into holistic living and she was you know like buying natural shampoos and like natural toothpaste and I remember thinking like judging her being like why would you do that like, why would you spend an extra like $3 on toothpaste? Like just get crest, you know, like who cares? I just, I never thought that there was any merit to this stuff, but something happened, something big shifted in me when I listened to this podcast and it just, something grabbed my soul. So I made an appointment and then that, you know, that appointment, that podcast really changed my life. And that's when I really started getting into holistic living. So to answer your question about like, what is a naturopathic doctor and like, you know, what is holistic? It's really just this idea of not treating just a symptom. So not being like, oh, you have cancer. We're going to give you surgery and chemotherapy and radiation. And, you know, that is necessary in, you know, a lot of cases. And, you know, I'm grateful for the conventional treatment that I had as well. But it's not just about the symptoms. It's really about looking at the whole person and then the underlying causes that contributed to that symptom because cancer doesn't just, you know, appear. It's something that grows over a period of years in your body because other conditions are not being met within your body that are allowing that to form. So it's really about looking at this bigger picture of you as a human, um, but not just as like a physical person, as a body, as a mind, as a spirit, and looking at where these imbalances exist in all three of those areas to bring health and harmony back to you as a whole person. So there's lots of different ways that you can go about doing that, but that's really what holistic is. It's just this view of like not treating a symptom. It's how can we treat the underlying root causes and looking at that at that symptom as not just a physical thing, but an imbalance in a physical, emotional, and a spiritual component to bring balance back. So I started with naturopathic care because at this point I was like very focused on like my physical body. I was like, get cancer out of me, get my immune system back, like give me all the antioxidants, like what supplements can I take? Like I was super hot to trot on, like heal me, you know, like make my body strong again. So I really focused on physical health. So I worked with a naturopathic doctor um, who specialized with cancer because if, depending on, you know, where you're at in your healing um, for your listeners, if 
anyone's interested, you know, if you're in chemotherapy or radiation, there definitely are, um, you know, some interactions that you have to be aware of. So it's important to work with a um, naturopath or a functional medicine doctor who is trained to work with cancer patients. So they know the um, conventional medications that you're taking because there are some contraindications um, because that's the thing I really want to emphasize is like, I, I thought this stuff was so crazy before, but then when I started realizing, oh, like you actually have to work with a special doctor for this because vitamins and minerals and these compounds and plants are actually so powerful that they could like mess up what this, like what the conventional treatments doing. Like that's when I started to realize, whoa, like there really is healing power in these, like in these plants um, and in these supplements, if they can interact with the conventional treatment. So that's when I really started to trust it. Cause before I just thought it was all, to be honest, like dumb, but then I was like, oh no, like if my, my oncologist is saying I can't take that because it could interact, well, then what is in here that's actually good for me that could actually help, you know what I mean? So that's kind of what led me um, to work with um, holistic doctors because I really wanted to heal me. I was just like, cancer is my wake up call to heal on all levels. And I was ready to do that work. I love <laughs> your interesting approach to all of this. I wrote down the health of harmony. I love that because oh, it's not you. just getting like one symptom and treating it and moving on, but it's really looking at the individual at at large and really seeing all of the interconnections between, you know, work and life and parenting or uh, relationships. And, you know, I think we underestimate how brutal stress can be in our lives and how that triggers other hormonal imbalances potentially in our systems that wreak havoc with us and come to fruition through migraines or acne or weight gain, et cetera, to just name a couple of the, the symptoms. So I really love that, you know, you were able to have this wake up call and make this shift and ultimately like shift your career too, to something that you're completely passionate about, which is really inspiring. I, I agree with you too. I love reading about nutrition. I'm not a nutritionist by any means, but I love reading about um, like the power of food as medicine. And it really just makes me, I, I feel like it's one of those like knowledge is power things where I know how good the broccoli is. So when I'm eating it, like I know what it's doing inside of my body. I know how good the green, dark leafy vegetables are. So for some reason, subconsciously, it makes them taste better for me. Too. Yeah, absolutely. And the way I like to approach nutrition for prevention is like, of course, like there are things as a holistic nutritionist that like I would want you to avoid, of course, because of the way they create inflammation and hormonal imbalances in your body. But I don't ever take anything off the table because life after breast cancer is not about restrictions, it's about joy. It's, an, it's about empowerment and it's about choice and it's about freedom. So we have to create that in your life because oftentimes we don't feel like we have choice or freedom. We feel like we are a victim of circumstances. Now we have a lifetime of doctor's appointments. We have a lifetime of um, not feeling good in my body, not feeling sexy, feeling stressed, always anxious about food. I have scans every six months. Like we feel like that we don't have a choice. This is just our life now and it is what it is. And we either have to accept it and move on or, you know, or we just, we live in turmoil and purgatory, right? Like there really isn't much of a choice or freedom there when you look at it from that perspective. So my belief is that life after breast cancer can be the healthiest, the happiest, the most fulfilled, the best years of your life. It's just about recognizing that you actually can and still have scans every six months and still take tamoxifen if that's part of your treatment plan. And, you know, um, go to like regular mammograms or whatever it is. It's like, you can still have all the choice and all the freedom that you want, but it's hard to get there if we're not first here. So you kind of have to address that first, that first place. So I always like to, you know, if the big goal that we have together, if we're working together is like overcoming fear of recurrence and really just creating the sense of freedom and peace and ease and pure joy, in your life without, you know, all this struggle and all this anxiety, it's like, okay, well, we can get there, but the first step is to be here. So let's look at where the anxiety is in a really accessible place. Like what's the lowest hanging fruit. We have to chip away at this big block of ice to get to that, you know, little nugget of gold that's on the inside, whether that's where we can, you know, overcome the fear of recurrence and all of that. So the first place I'd always see it is with 
food. It's like, okay, like um, I, I had wine on the weekend and then that I see people stressing about it or I had pizza on the weekend or it's their kid's birthday party and I had a piece of birthday cake and they worry about it and they feel guilty. I'm like, that is not living life. So my approach to nutrition is very much like, let's look at everything is always on the table and how can we make informed? Because that's the key. You have to understand how it's affecting your body. When you understand it, you can make an informed choice to either avoid it. Take, it puts you back in the driver's seat. You're back in control. You you are, um, you're just back in charge of your life. You know, you're no longer like a victim of your circumstances. Like, oh, I can't have birthday cakes. I had breast cancer. It's like, no, you can choose to have it. And you can also choose to not have it. You just have to understand. And then you can just make an informed, conscious and empowered choice. So I love dessert. I have dessert like I don't know, most days of the week. Like I just, I just love it. It's me. It's who I am. So nothing's ever off the table. It's just a matter of understanding how certain foods impact your body on a cellular level. So for example, it's really important to know how sugar is, even sugars from honey and maple syrup and dates and these like quote healthier forms impact your body. It's still important to know how they impact your body in terms of breast cancer growth and spread. It's important to know that. And then you can make a choice to have it from there. And granted, like I said, I, I make a choice to have it from there. I am, but I understand what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So that's kind of my approach to nutrition. So it's not so much like an everything in moderation. It's more like everything's always on the table at any point in time. You are a, a beautiful soul with free will to make a choice at any point based on how you feel in that moment. And that can change moment by moment, day to day. It's just the method that I teach to make you feel, to get you back in control of your life is to really enforce and reiterate that it all comes down to present moment choices that honor your highest self, because that always, always, always puts you back in the driver's seat of your life. Cause then you're making a choice right now in the moment based on what's going to make you Laura or me, Lauren feel the best right now. And not like a, an instant gratification. Like I had a bad day at work. I'm having this wine. Cause that's what's going to make me feel good right now. It's like, what's truly going to make the highest version of myself feel good? The person who just knows that breast cancer was part of my life, but it doesn't define me in any way. It's just part of my experience now. And I get to move forward with grace and love and trust in my body and confidence in my body. What's going to make that version of me feel good right now. And, you know, I think you also bring up topics of how we go through these patterns of, you know, not trusting our bodies anymore because somehow it let us down. And, you know, I think I maybe have mentioned to you earlier, I say on social all the time, I was a vegan before breast cancer. I was exercising regularly and eating really well. And I cannot believe I got breast cancer mm -hmm. based on what my lifestyle was before. And I like to use that as my baseline because I went like 180 or three, whatever the the opposite, <laughs> it is, um, you know, I didn't go all the way to eating meat, but my boyfriend sure did. He was like, you got breast cancer. I'm getting a steak. And so, you know, just like the, the gut reaction of, you know, what you're talking about, uh, risk reduction versus we can't actually prevent breast cancer. We don't really know enough yet about the mutations in our cells. And, you know, right now it could be the environment. It could be all these toxic products and chemicals that we're putting on our bodies. But to your point of, being informed and making these like informed decisions about what we're eating, what we're putting on our skin, what lip balm we're using on our lips that we eventually digest. You know, these all are small things and ta um, tactics to getting to this lifestyle, I think that you're alluding to. So I really appreciate that. So there's, so I just want to really emphasize that, like, cause what you said is like, you know, we can't prevent breast cancer. We don't know enough yet, but we know a lot. And that's the thing, like most people, when they want to take steps for prevention, they talk about what you just mentioned and what we've talked about so far in this podcast. But I always kind of say that it's like you, if you've done all that already, and you're still feeling really anxious, that's a sign that you're not that something isn't making you feel, you know, still safe in your body. So there's work to still be doing there. And it's not a big deal that you didn't know what else to do besides, you know, exercising more um, and, you know, maybe making some more informed nutrition choices and switching over, you know, your products that you, you know, put on your skin and things like that. Cause that's all I did at the beginning too. Cause I didn't know anymore. You know, we don't know what we don't know. We've been taught, you know, diet exercise our whole life. So that's kind of like intuitive. We just know we can make improvements there or some changes, I should say. Um, but 
after that, it's like, we don't know much else. And then you start to be like, okay, I start hearing about natural products. So that's like a really next, you know, low hanging fruit, logical step. But, you know, we can't take any other steps if we don't know what the next step is. It was, you know, a journey of five years of really doing deep dives on my own internal landscape to understand and then working with clients and seeing how many similarities there are among breast cancer survivors with thought patterns that we have, belief systems that we carry. And there's so much that you actually can do when you understand how you mentioned like how stress impacts our body and how it can like, you know, create different uh, releases of hormones in our body. But it's really important to understand how um, your genes are actually expressed based on what the vibration is inside your internal landscape. And that's determined based on your thoughts that you carry, the talk that you have about yourself. Because we're thinking, you know, 60,000 thoughts a day, we're eating three times. We exercise maybe an hour a day, five times a week. So it's the things that happen the most often is what matters the most. But people don't realize that it's your thoughts. It's your feelings because your thoughts create your feelings and how you feel determines what happens inside your body. So I like to use stress as an example because it's something that everyone can really understand and relate to when you feel think you can just think of a time that you're stressed when you can immediately like feel your shoulders tense up or you can feel your chest your chest tighten or you get like a knot in your stomach like it's an immediate reaction when you think of stress right so it's really important to see that a feeling that you have creates a physical or thought you have creates a physical reaction in your body. So it's really important to understand that these like thoughts that you have are constantly creating these feelings within your body that are releasing, you know, chemicals. And we want to make sure that we are doing what we can to make that internal environment homeostasis. And there's a lot that we can do there, but it's why I work with people for minimum 12 weeks because um, the rest of the course after we do, you know, the nutrition and then um, the detox and, you know, the detox is of course, like what products you're putting on, but also actually opening up your elimination channels because we have seven of them and we want them to be open and flowing and just eliminating is what we want. But then the rest of it is really on how can we really become an observer of these patterns that we have and how can we reprogram them because we program them this way based on the course of our lives we can also reprogram them and it's a beautiful thing so there's so much that you really can do to really take ownership of your health and your life going forward and it goes back to kind of what i was saying about like we have so much life after breast cancer doesn't have to be this like, struggle of anxiety. It really is about freedom and choice and peace. And that's what it's all about. But we have to create that, but we get to choose to create it. And it's like, I don't know, I, I have coaches for this stuff too, because it's hard, right? But we, it's possible. And you just have to understand that it's one step at a time. But if you don't know the next step to take, that's okay. But you just have to recognize that there is still another step. Like there's no reason for any of us as survivors to be living in a constant state of struggle. There really isn't. There's enough support out there. And I just pray every day that people's hearts are open and willing. And so they receive it because it's really there. Maybe it's this podcast for somebody, you know, it's just like, who knows, but the support's out there for us to not struggle. And personally for me, like at any point in my life now, if I'm struggling, it's not, you know, in terms of my health really anymore, I don't have the fear of recurrence. Like, you know, my program works, I don't have it, but there are things that um, in my business that come up that really overwhelm me that I need some support with. Um, you know, I have a therapist for some other things as well, for some trauma that's resurfaced for me recently, like support exists and it's okay to, to get it. Um, but it's really the reason why I continually invest in those supports myself is because I refuse to struggle. I struggled enough, you know, I, I struggled enough in my life and I, there's just no reason to struggle anymore. <laughs> so I'm grateful that, um, you know, I don't have this like crippling fear of recurrence like I used to anymore where like every scan would derail me, you know, and throw me into like a panic for a week or two at a time. But, you know, healing isn't a journey that just like stops. It's something that always continues. And I'm just grateful that I've created the space in my life that nothing like will unravel me. I'm just like, okay, I feel really um, overwhelmed right now, or I feel really triggered by this thing in my life right now. Like, what can I do so I don't suffer? Cause I refuse, like I refuse to do that now. It's just like a big no. <laughs> 
Well, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear how you've evolved, how your program is, you know, you're preaching and practicing exactly what you're teaching others to do and, you know, how you can give yourself permission to ask for help and get support, whether it's in the breast cancer community or if it's external, as you were saying, you know, with work or even like, I'm thinking of like mom support groups, like how hard it is to be like a new mom, especially in times of COVID or anything that's going on in the world, really that, you know, we want to find connection. I think as humans, that's really important for us to have this level of, you know, someone understands me, someone gets it, someone understands what I'm going through and that you can emerge out there a better and stronger person because of it. Two other follow-up questions I have for you is, well, one first, we've been talking and kind of dancing around this amazing program and business you have. So first let's talk about what the name of it is and how people can find out more. And of course I'll link to all of it in the show notes below, but what is your company or website and people, how can people find you? My program is, it's called Breast Cancer Thriver. And what it is, is it's your step-by-step plan to overcome anxiety and fear of recurrence by taking the guesswork out of your prevention plan, because that's honestly um, where a lot of the fear comes from, this fear of the unknown. And it's like, well, I don't know how to prevent breast cancer. Maybe I made, maybe I was a vegan and I already use natural products and I got breast cancer anyway. So like, what am I missing? What am I doing wrong? Like, you don't know what to do, or it could be the opposite. Like I wasn't doing anything, you know, for my health before. Um, I don't know how to start. I'm trying to be making better choices. Like, do I go gluten-free? Is vegan the best for me? But I really like meat and so does my family. And I don't know how to cook separate meals for me. It's just, you don't know where to start or anywhere in between. It's just taking the guesswork out. Because if you can take the guesswork out and you have a step-by-step plan to follow, you can have the thought stop and then you can start to do the work to heal because it's not just about the food and it's not just about the products. Like I said, the majority of the work that we do, it's on the mind because we need to really reframe a lot to emphasize that life after actually is the most joyful time without all this fear and anxiety weighing you down. And when I say this reframe, my goal isn't it for it to be, I mean, at the beginning, it's like, okay, like catch yourself on a negative thought and then reframe it. But the goal by the end of my time with my clients is for that to be the lens that they actually see the world through. So it's like, they're wearing a pair of glasses that are like joy glasses. So like they only see the world that way. It's like the fear, you know, the appointments are still there. The, you know, taking the daily tamoxifen still there or whatever it is, it's still there, but you see the world through this different lens. Like that becomes your effortless habitual way of being. That's my goal. So that that's really, you know, what we do through, through the course. It's really, um, a program for people who are willing to do that work because it's not just, you know, nutrition changes. And I'm very clear about that. So that's why there's an interview process to go into my course because I have um, a 98% success rate. So um, I'm very particular about who I welcome in because the program works if you do the work. It's as simple as that. So I run this program and it's touched the lives of a couple hundred people all around the world now, which is super, super exciting in the last two years. And um you know, I actually just redid the course about six months ago as well, just with, I wanted to update it as well. Cause I mean, I'm always learning and evolving and growing and I'm like, okay, I can make it even better now, you know? So, um, that's the course and it's pretty, pretty incredible. Um, but something that I'm actually doing right now at this moment. Um, so it's July 12th at the time of this recording, I'm not sure when it's going to air and I'm going to keep this open until the end of July. So hopefully this episode comes out, but the first module of my course is on nutrition, because obviously that's the most logical place to start, especially if we have, if we're trying to address anxiety and fear of recurrence, again, we can get there, there, but we have to first be here. So where, where is that starting? Where's the first manifestation of it in your life that we can work on to like chip away at these, you know, more accessible pieces it's with nutrition. So I'm offering that first module as a separate standalone course. So for people who maybe work two jobs or just add twins or any of the you know examples that I said, it's something that anybody can do because um, the videos are pre-recorded. So you can literally watch them on your own time. And I have like, I give lifetime access to all my courses because like I said, healing isn't something that um, it's, you know, a one-time thing. It's something that's for life. So that information is always available to um, go back and refer because you might need a refresher at some point. So, you know, when you mentioned, oh my God, like, am I making present moments? 
like twice with the highest version of me, like that's like a, a snapshot of what's in module one. So for anybody who's just like that resonated with them earlier, I do recommend, um, you know, that mini course. It's literally just like the first module only of my course, but it's five pre-recorded masterclasses of everything that I need to teach you about how to make those informed conscious present moment choices that are in alignment with the highest version of you. So that way when your choices for nutrition, they aren't rooted in fear of like, oh, I have to have my greens today. I have to have this broccoli. Did I have enough crucifers this week? To I choose to like, this makes me feel good. I can go to a birthday party and have cake. I can go to, you know, a 4th of July barbecue and have whatever and not feel guilty about it because that guilt and that worry and that anxiety, it just creates more of that in your life. That's why I got to chip away at it at, at the forefront. So the first module is intended to do that. And so like any question, like how do I get enough calcium if I don't have dairy? Like what about soy? What about date sugar? Like, I think right now there's like 25 video FAQs in there. So it's just like, and that's just all in like the first module of the course, but I am offering that right now just as like a separate, you know, thing. And again, you have lifetime access to it. You can always go back. So those are my current two offerings. And I'm going to kind of keep it that way for the next little while. Um, but I do have one other thing cooking on the back burner, but um, no time right now. I'm going to kind of enjoy my summer. So I think it's going to be something that I release, um, maybe in October. We'll see. Amazing. Well, such great resources. And I'm excited for all of the the work that you're currently doing and then what you have cooking up. And we can't wait to hear what's coming down the pike. So this is just phenomenal. You know, I feel like we've learned so much about just, you know, how we see ourselves and the lens through which we can see ourselves, whether we're a patient, newly diagnosed, living years after a diagnosis, and really just, I love your points of like finding joy and really being able to cultivate this environment where we wake up with, you know, with life, with happiness, with understanding that yes, there's going to be stressors regardless, but we have the opportunity to react to them in different ways and really create this environment inside of our bodies that perpetuate this healthy lifestyle. So I really appreciate you taking a deep dive in all of this. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd want to share with our listeners? I always say, you know, your hormones aren't the problem. Hormonal imbalances are, and there isn't anything wrong with taking tamoxifen or an aromatase inhibitor. If that's part of your prevention plan, and that's what makes you feel good. You know, I made the choice to not do that as part of my own prevention plan, but that's, you know, my choice with my body. Um, I would say 95% of my clients, well, I should say, I probably have like a 60, 40 split of clients who had, um, ER positive breast cancer, and then, you know, maybe 40% like TMBC. Mm -hmm. um, but out of, let's say that 60% of clients who, you know, had hormonal breast cancer, like 95% of them are on hormone blocking medication. You know, it's a very common part of a prevention plan and many women feel safe and safer, um, taking it, which is a wonderful thing. It's all about feeling safe in your body and confident in a prevention plan. So it's wonderful to have this as a, as a, as part of your plan. My belief is that if you're going to take those, or if you're not going to, well, I should say, if you're going to take them, it's let's make them work better, you know, like let's support their, their function. So they are intended to prevent extra estrogen from attaching to breast cells, which is, you know, a wonderful thing if you had hormonal breast cancer, right? But like you said, they, they aren't addressing the root cause. They don't do anything to what to address why there is extra estrogen attaching to breast cells in the first place. So it's like, again, like let's treat this symptom. Let's not get to the root cause. So I'm all for, you know, conventional medic medicine, you know, if it's for you, it's for you. I'm all for that. But whether you're not, so for someone like me who, who chooses not to, as part of my prevention plan, I'm very, very um, adamant about making sure that there isn't any extra estrogen attaching to breast cells in my own body. But even if I was on tamoxifen, I would still be doing these exact same things, you know, because again, it's all about root cause. So even if you are taking tamoxifen, like let's, let's work with it. Let's work with these beautiful gifts you have as you're part of your treatment and help them work better. So the way I say we can help them work better is by getting to that root cause, like looking at where estrogen could be um, being fed from other sources and manufactured from other sources and looking at 
um, not just where it could be, you know, being created, but where the blocks are and it being eliminated. That's why, you know, I mentioned my, my detox module isn't just about switching over the toxin, the products. It's also like, where are, where is something not being eliminated? Like, how can we open that up? Because the main way extra estrogen leaves your body is actually through your, your stool. So we got to make sure you're, you're having regular bowel movements. It's really, really important for, for all areas of health, but specifically in hormonal health, like that's how estrogen leaves. So um, it's about really looking at, okay, so to your question was, how can we get our hormones back in balance? I, again, like to do an education, like this is how all, these are the ways that estrogen could be being um, fed or grown. And these are the ways that it could be, um, you know, blocked from being eliminated, but then also where are all these ways that other things in your body interact with estrogen? Because like we were saying earlier, like we're this ecosystem, right? Things don't work in isolation. So it's really about understanding the relationship between estrogen and these other hormones in your body. So in my course, and when I work with people, um, I like to address horm like three hormones. So I do estrogen, um, insulin and cortisol, which is your stress hormone and insulin is the hormone that's released when you, um, when you eat pretty much like carbohydrates, but also even, you know, protein as well. It's what gets the energy from your food out of your blood and into your cells for energy. But there's so much. So those three hormones, like they, they talk to each other all day long, like they're constantly talking to each other. So you need to make sure you're understanding the relationship between them. So for example, if you're super, super stressed, um, and you're not eating in a way to meet your adrenal glands where they're at, that causes an extra stress on your adrenals, which actually causes estrogen to pump out. And it also causes insulin to kick out, which also then in turn impacts estrogen. So those three, there's obviously lots of other hormones going on in your body, um, but we can't do it all, right? So the, those are the three that have the biggest impact and they work so well together that when you can optimize those, those three, you can really bring back a lot of that health and harmony to your whole system. So in terms of hormonal imbalance, it's not just estrogen that you want to look at because other things, especially insulin and especially cortisol, they impact estrogen significantly. And then it's also about, um, so that those are sources of exposure that people don't necessarily think about. They don't think that, you know, oh, they think, oh, maybe I shouldn't have soy for estrogen reasons or whatever. So that's why they think about what they eat. And I'm like, it's actually really important to understand how insulin is being released when you, when you eat to impact your estrogen, like it's a whole thing. So, and again, I teach all that in module one of my course and that is available as a separate standalone mini course. That's a shameless plug, but like, I want people to have access to this information. Like I'm trying to make as accessible as possible because I just don't want people to stress anymore. It breaks my heart, Laura. So this is why I'm offering it as a separate thing. I used to be like, no, you need the whole course because truly I do believe everyone needs the whole course but because not everyone can I want everyone to have the opportunity to have to have this you know because it really brings so much peace of mind when you just have answers you can just exhale and when you exhale oh my god now there's space to do to take another step who knows what that's going to be but like when you're just sitting like this and for people who can't see me, I'm just like, like rigid right now. Like, cause you can't, you don't know what to do. I just want people to be able to exhale. So I hope that answered the question on hormonal imbalance. Yeah, it's no, like, it's, it's not simple. And I wish I had like a, a screen with diagrams cause I, I can show the relationships between them a lot more, but um, just, I guess to sum that up as a takeaway for everybody listening, hormonal imbalance, it's really understanding the relationship between estrogen, cortisol, insulin, and then understanding how they talk to each other so that you can have a plan to recognize imbalances and then take action from that place. And then it's also about knowing sources of exposure and then sources of and making sure you're eliminating and those can kind of create um, a more healthy hormonal balance inside your body.